Hi, and thanks for watching. Today I'm going to share just a real basic back of the envelope residential land development model that I that I built. Now, I started my career, my res real estate career in uh, the residential land development side of the business. I've since transitioned to institutional commercial real estate investment. Nonetheless, I have some expertise in this area and have had a few requests from our readers on our blog to build a, a model such as this. So, so that's what I've done. It is just one tab, uh, modeling one phase of horizontal development, assumes a land purchase, an entitlement, and at the end of the entitlement period, a close on the land, and then uh, a construction period. I have real simple inputs for construction. I haven't detailed that out. I just have simply a cost per lot. And then there's some basic financing assumptions and then there's a, a sale of the lots in some period uh, that you can, I, you can set. So let's let me walk you through it. To, first, we have a summary of returns, both on an unlevered basis, so all equity, or on a levered basis if you go out and get an acquisition and development loan, or some sort of uh, uh, financing. You can layer that in, uh, just one layer of debt and equity, and that gives you your, your levered returns. Uh, I also have some uh, basic summary such as equity required in an unlevered situation and then this equity at absolute risk now this was a metric that i looked at when i was in the business and that is this concept of uh, you have equity that you're putting out there prior to entitlement uh, and in this case prior to closing on the land that's kind of your absolute risk right because there's the potential that uh, you spend all this money in an entitlement and you don't get the entitlement that you need or that makes financial sense to close. So that's that uh, equity at absolute risk. And then I also just here mention uh, in the levered side uh, what your equity requirement would be versus the amount of, of debt that you would need to put on this. In terms of the land purchase, again, simple inputs. The purchase price for, of the land, you could uh, you could use a goal seek to drive to some land purchase based on a equity multiple or an IRR if you use the residual land value concept to arrive at a land value. We have an earnest money uh, which uh, assumes it's so it's built into this equity at risk but it's assumed that it will be credited towards your purchase price at close. Uh, there's a due diligence amount and that that is assumed uh, that's loss so that's equity at risk and not credited back at, at any point that's the money you're spending to, to see if this is a viable uh, investment there's a period of time that you'll be spending that uh, that uh, due diligence money in this case I put three months and that is averaged uh, linearly over uh, that three month period beginning from time one through whatever, however many months you put for your due diligence. Then there's a closing month, and right now it's defaulted to be the month following when you get the entitlement. You can close sooner if you want. Uh, best practices is to, to not close until you do have your entitlement. And then closing costs, again, uh, on your land purchase, number of acres that you're purchasing, and then the number of lots that you anticipate to entitle on uh, that acreage. And so that's in your land purchase. Then in your entitlement assumptions, uh, the length of entitlement, and again, assuming uh, from period one through however many months you think it's going to take to get your entitlement, I put 18 months here. Your architecture and engineering costs, that's a total amount, 60000 And that, again, is spread out evenly over the entitlement period. And then uh, consulting fees and other entitlement expenses. Again, this is real simple, and you see it especially in the construction side. So as soon as you have your entitlement, construction is assumed to begin immediately. Uh, you have a period for that, and then you have a cost per lot in construction. Again, uh, spread out evenly over the six-month construction period. So this would be 25000 multiplied by the 70 lots divided by six months. Uh, and you see that actually right here on that construction period, right? Then we have your uh, financing assumptions. You're going to have some average interest rate. Uh, typically, uh, these acquisition development loans are variable rate, and so that's why I called it average interest rate. Whatever you think the average uh, rate you'll pay uh, over the whole period it will be. A loan to cost that, uh, that you'll get. So in this case, 
Uh, loan to cost comes out to about 1.787 million. Uh, on top of that, then there's some interest reserve, and this is automatically calculated. It's an it is an estimate. I'm not using uh, either uh, an iterative calculation where you get a circular reference and, and it gets us to a more precise number, nor am I using a goal seek, which I use in some of my other models to arrive at a more accurate interest uh, reserve. This is just a basic way of calculating it. Um, at the end of the day, it's going to be pretty dang close. Uh, but again, this is back of the envelope. So this is you uh, just taking a quick look at a property and you want to determine whether it, it reaches your uh, return hurdle. Uh, this is this is what it will get you. So a, a, just an estimate of your interest reserve is sufficient at this stage. And then finished lots. The amount of time it's going to take once you finish the lot and they go, uh, go out for sale to absorb those lots, the the sales price of the lot, and then whatever closing cost you're estimating it's going to be. And then this tells you in all you're going to get about $5 million in revenue from the sale of these lots. Uh, if we come down here, we see just the basic pro forma, uh, a total. You get $5 million in inflows, $2.875 million in outflows. On an unlevered basis, you're about $2.165 million in net profit, which equates to what, a one and then quarter uh, IRR and a 1.75 equity multiple. In my experience on the land development side, we cared much more about our multiple and less so about uh, the, the IRR, uh, simply because uh, there's a lot of cash going out and in, and the IRR isn't as precise of a figure as just knowing how much is our equity going to grow uh, in this investment. And so we would typically drive uh, to some sort of land value based on a multiple, uh, more so than on the IRR. But every every shop's a little different. So with that, uh, that is the residential land development back of the envelope model. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. And thanks for listening and watching.